Welcome to Whiskey's a Journey. My name is Peter Fasciano, and today we are headed back to Middleton Distillery, and we're going to be taking a look at Redbreast 12. Not again, but this time we're going to be looking at their cask strength version. So just like always, let's go ahead and pour it, nose it, taste it, talk about it a little bit since we've already covered it in the last video, and then give it a score. Oh man, I can already smell it. So Redbreast 12 cast strength is what I think is just like Redbreast 12, just dialed up. Uh, when we're talking about cast strength whiskeys, and when I first started my journey, a lot of people were saying, oh, I'm gravitating towards cast strength. I'm gravitating towards the higher proof whiskeys. And it took me quite a while to be prepared or get used to the ABV. And once I did, it was like going through a brick wall. And all of a sudden, all of these flavors started to come through. And now I really truly understand why people gravitate towards higher proof whiskeys. They seem to be more flavorful. There's a lot more complexity to it. And everything is just elevated more than a normal lower proof, somewhere around the 45% area. Anything a little bit higher than that just seems to be a little bit better in every way. Not always but the majority of the time, higher proof whiskeys, for me at this particular time in my journey, it seems to be hitting home a little bit more than the lower proofs. All right, knowing a little bit about this, I do get the sherry cask. So I have those sherry notes that are coming through here, the red fruits, the darker fruits. I get a slight sulfur note. The sulfur note is there, but it's not overpowering. <laughs> hear my throat. I think I'm a Pavlov's dog. I know the sip is coming and my throat is already starting to prepare for it. It's crazy. This is also matured in ex bourbon and a lot of the vanilla and the caramel and the brown sugar is coming through. Actually, no, no brown sugar. The caramel and the honey side is coming through. Spinning the glass, the viscosity of this is like syrup. It's just running down the side of the glass. All right, let's go ahead and get this thing on the palate. Oh man, Redbreast 12 cast strength is probably one of my very favorite Irish whiskeys. Not only that, but it's probably one of my favorite whiskeys in general. And this is Redbreast 12. It's an Irish single pot still whiskey, triple distilled. This is 56.3% ABV, 112.6 proof, 112.6 proof. Yeah, 112.6 proof. And my batch is batch B121. Like I had mentioned, this is coming out of the Middleton Distillery. And Middleton Distillery is producing a whole bunch of stuff for different brands. Again, this is 12 years. It is matured in X bourbon. And then I think they're also maturing them in X Oloroso sherry casks or sherry butts. And then they blend them together. 750 milliliter bottle. And get this, when I first purchased this bottle, and this is this is my second bottle of the cast strength. I bought this for $79.99, and this is actually going for, in Phoenix, Arizona, this is going for $92.99, which is just going to show you guys how much the price of Irish whiskey is going up. Irish whiskey seems to be going up in price far faster than any other whiskey out there. Japanese, bourbons, scotches, you name it. Irish is just astronomically high. All right, on the second nose, I'm getting more sweetness, more vanilla, and less of that sulfur note. And I've noticed that with sherried whiskeys. As soon as you pour it, there is a slight sulfur note, but then after a couple of minutes, maybe you know five or 10 minutes, that sulfur note kind of goes away and you're left with a very pleasant, sweet smelling whiskey. Let's go ahead and get that second sip, see if I can pull anything else out of it and also concentrate on that finish. All right, that time, just like always, as I'm bringing it up to my mouth to take a sip, I have my mouth open a little bit. I'm breathing in slightly, and that time I got blasted with a lot of the sherry notes. I end up having slight dark raisins, some figs, some plums, some dates. It's pretty sweet, but it's not over the top sweet. And then as it's traveling to the mid palate, I pick up a little bit of spice. Not a pepper spice, but a cooking spice. Like always, I get a little bit of tannin on the side of my tongue, and then the finish 
seems to be lingering around quite a bit. So I would say that the finish is medium to long. Other than the high ABV, I'm not getting a lot of sharpness of any kind. And I think the star of this show is definitely going to be those Oloroso Sherry Butts. Let's get that third sip down. Let me touch a little bit about Middleton Distillery and then we'll get on to the score. Yeah, those dark fruits are front and center here. The figs, the dates, the raisins. The ABV is rather hot at the beginning. It tapers off rather quickly. Mid palate spicy, finishes really well. Now, when I talked a little bit earlier about Middleton, they produce a whole bunch of different labels and I wanna make sure that I get this right. So they produce Jameson Powers, which is coming up in next Monday's video, Middleton Very Rare, the Spot Whiskies, and then within the Middleton Distillery, they also have a micro distillery where they do some experimental stuff with Method and Madness. And I do believe up until 2012, they actually produced Tullamore Dew there. And I think Tullamore Dew was bought by Grant, William Grant and Sons, and now they have their own individual distillery. If I got that information wrong, please let me know in the comments down below, which I guess is as good as time as any to let you guys know. If you like this information and you're not subscribed to the channel, do me a favor and subscribe to the channel. It's really easy, it's free, just click on that button. I go live with videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So if you're liking this information, go ahead and subscribe. All right, let's go ahead and get on to the score. If you're new here, I'm, my scoring system or my rating system is out of five stars. If I'm giving something a three, I think that's just a very average whiskey. Anything above three, I like. Anything below three, I'm not a fan of. And from the very beginning of this video, me telling you guys this, this is one of my favorite whiskeys up to this point of all time. Now, I'm not gonna go crazy and give this a five, but I am gonna give this 4.25. I think the elevated ABV brings out more of the complexity of this whiskey. I think that pot still spice that everybody talks about, I kind of equate that more towards one of those vanilla wafers. If those vanilla wafers had a little bit of cooking spice in them, you get really rich, dark red fruits along with those vanilla and honey notes. All around, I think this is a spectacular Irish whiskey, a good whiskey overall. In fact, because this is now running more $92, I'm gonna drop it from 4.25. I'm gonna drop this down to four. This is my second batch, and I've gotta tell you, my first batch, my first bottle of this is probably what sticks in my mind the most. It was a phenomenal bottle, and this one doesn't seem to be as flavorful, and I think you kinda of get batch variation from batch to batch. And because this bottle is not as good as my first bottle and the price has gone up dramatically, I'm gonna drop from 4.25 down to four. So there you guys have it. Red Breast 12, cast strength. What do you guys think of it? Have you had it? Let me know in the comments down below. If you've had any of the Red Breast offerings, also let me know in the comments down below what you guys think of the Red Breast line. And that's all I have to say. So go ahead and enjoy your journey. And if you guys are still around, I believe this is coming out on Monday, which is the day after Father's Day. So to all those fathers out there, happy Father's Day. I hope you guys are enjoying your journey and we'll talk to you guys next time. Bye.